Switzerland. William tells Switzerland. Switzerland, where you can ski over snow or climb mountains, and if you're athletic or rich enough, have a holiday that will make you forget the problems of workaday life. But you don't need to go to Switzerland, because if you flex your fingers and exercise your brain, you'll find everything that Switzerland has to offer home in Britain, including a mountain climbing school, where to begin with, you work the muscles an alpine climber needs. We're mountaineering at a place called Eridge in Sussex, not too far from Tunbridge Wells, on a sandstone outcrop laid down, the scientists say, a hundred million years ago. Or at the start of the course, on this modern man-made rock face they've contrived. Switzerland, here in Britain. At this school, you can learn the techniques that can take you up or down the Welsh or Scottish mountains, because there's challenging climbing to be done here at home that needs expert instruction. You can even find climbs here at this non-profit making school of which the patron is the Duke of Edinburgh. 8,000 would-be mountaineers have trained and tackled the 170 different climbs that this rock face presents. There are childishly easy ways of climbing this 60 foot of rock and there are other routes up which experienced climbers would rate as almost impossible. All the year round, it's the ideal practice ground for anyone who wants to conquer mountains, whatever his experience or skill. He's one of the pupils of the Merchant Taylor's School who train here. And she's a policewoman cadet. People come here to train from the services, from public schools and from youth organizations where members prepare for the Duke of Edinburgh's award scheme and some of them live on the site in bivouacs while they're doing their climbing course. In the three years since these Bowles rocks were made into an outdoor training center, 8,000 pupils have passed through, learning the rope work and safety factors which have converted mountain climbing from an exciting hazard into a controlled skill. Expert instructors tell you your mistakes and will demonstrate how to correct them. And this rock face, small though it is, contains crags and boulders and overhanging stone presenting almost every problem you'll find on any mountain you care to climb. Here in Sussex you might be in Switzerland, except for the fact that there's no regular supply of snow here. That means that you can climb but you can't go skiing. Or does it mean that? It means no such thing, because where there's a will, there's a way. You don't need snow for skiing. Nylon bristle mats are even better, insofar as they don't melt. This is London, the Crystal Palace Park, and they're laying a ski run here which will be fit for use in the high summer. In fact, the only thing that can put a nylon ski run out of action is a fall of snow that might clog it up. to think that we used to wait for winter. This is a magic carpet that will outlive a score of thaws. And under skis, it feels like the softest of Swiss snowdrifts. They're laying 500 square yards of snow matting here for round the calendar skiing, with flood lighting in the evening. And they're cushioning every tree with foot thick rubber mattresses. Tessa Dredge of British Ski Team fame gives instructions in the once a week courses which the Central Council of Physical Recreation have laid on. So sidestep your way up the slope to see what the first batch of pupils can do here in London's little Switzerland when they finish their ritual limbering up. Winter sports at Crystal Palace, as it's still called, though the palace was burnt down years ago and there isn't a crystal of snow for miles around. See how they go. Yes, this could be Switzerland, for the only thing missing is William Tell, and that very Swiss thing, his crossbow. But what have we here? 
The scene is Richmond, Surrey. The man, Kenneth Dendle, craftsman and crossbow maker. Yes, Mr. Dendle is the modern English William Tell. He's making the silent arrow slingers, which with today's precision, are more accurate than the original, which sliced open an apple on a little boy's head. At a hundred yards range, a Dendle crossbow is more accurate than a rifle. Since he started making them six years ago, these crossbows have been used in jungle warfare with deadly effect. The arrows leave the bow at a speed of 400 miles an hour. So deadly are they that they've been banned by law in many parts of the United States. Here, where the standard model will set you back about 20 pounds, they're used mostly for target shooting and starting a sport which threatens to outrival ordinary archery. It could be a lethal weapon, and you can see the care and craftsmanship that's gone into its construction, which leaves Ken Dendle the only national champion who has won all the major trophies in his sport with equipment that he himself has made with pride. Just let him get his sights set and see him turn an English woodland into true William Tell country. If he was shooting at live game instead of at paper targets, his prey would come to earth in a real Swiss roll.